Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I have, I think someone is gonna, I'm gonna look back and say she's one of my favorite guests of all time. I've, I've gotten to know this woman a little bit and she is uh, energetic and uh, passionate and mission driven and knows what the heck she's talking about. So with me today is Dr. Amanda Rose. She's the author of the book called Half My Size with the Ridiculously Big Salad. I wanna show this up here real quick. This is a great book, you wanna read this. But now she's written a new book, we're talking about that as well. But she's the founder of the weight loss community called Eat Like a Bear. We're gonna find out what that means. So welcome, Amanda. Thanks so much, Jack. Thanks for having me on today. I really appreciate this and the opportunity to talk about my community. And sure. um, as people might guess, I am the first um, weight loss case in this group. I'm ha half my size, but the real fire in the group is the community that we have. People like Georgia from Texas, who's down 130 pounds and still going. We have Maria, who's a half my size case. We have Shelly, also half her size, and here she is practicing for a 5K she likes to do. So she started walking in 5Ks for the first time in her life. Like um, I say, she says, I walk because I can, not because I should. And here is Sarah, half her size, paddle boarding on Lake Tahoe. I love this photo of Sean. Sean is here with her granddaughter in this toy car that Sean would have had a real hard time fitting in 100 pounds ago. And just last week in Missouri, these ladies met up and together they are down 879 pounds. Six of them are century cases. And then my favorite coffee club in Rhode Island, these ladies, including Sue, who is down 50 pounds, are reading the book Half My Size with a Ridiculously Big Salad. And the, the thing about our community is it, it's, it's mainly women over 50, but we have a lot of others too, but that's kind of our, our hallmark. And we're the people for whom weight loss programs have never really worked. And the core reason is we're not moderate people. And so the messages of moderation of like, you know, count your calories or just eat one cup of chips. I mean, who eats a cup of chips? We don't. And so what we do is we, we um, have sort of acknowledged our excesses and we put them in a boundary. And I just want to show you quickly what we do with that. We are intermittent fasters. We do time restricted eating. And so we just eat in a certain segment of the day. And in my case, I eat in one hour and I eat big. Can I show you what I eat in? Sure. <laughs> so this bowl is what I eat my ridiculously big salad in. It's truly ridiculous. I fill it with greens, with a homemade dressing, with a protein, and I have all my calories and my nutrition in the one meal. I am more satisfied than I've ever been with my eating every day. I am full like it's Thanksgiving, and then I just draw the bright line on eating and then just continue with the rest of my day in all of my excessive awesomeness until it's time to eat again. And that is the hallmark of the Eat Like a Bear community. Now, Let's talk about how you got there. You had been, uh, like you said, you lost half your size, you know, weight, you know, you were double what you weigh now. And you talk about a century club, which means people have lost 100 pounds or more. And you tried a lot of diets. What makes this diet different, this eating within a certain time frame and eating as much as you want? Talk about what that is, how you got there and, and why it works. Yeah, so the big thing is it just hits square at the center of insulin resistance. And so, what, I mean, and there, there's lots of people talking about this now, and it's something that I wasn't even paying attention to. I just kind of lucked out in um, crafting this formula and maybe striking right at the center of something that was affecting me biologically all those years. And the idea is that as um, you, as you eat, you know, there's some programs that recommend that you eat many times a day, like lots of little bits of food all throughout the day, and each time those spike your 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 insulin, and so um, you're producing actually more insulin over time. Your body becomes resistant to it, much like it does to drugs. I mean, right with alcohol, I talk about how back when I was 15, it could really feel, feel the effects of NyQuil, right? And then, you know, by the time I was 49, I mean, I'm chug-a-lugging like, you know, how many, how many nighttime cocktails and it doesn't even affect me. And it's very much like your body will produce more and more insulin over time as it becomes insulin resistant. Insulin makes you fat. And so, um, it is why the weight creeps up. And if you can really hit it dead on, 
um, and, and bring that insulin resistance down, you're going to see weight loss. And so people see achieve, achieve weight loss, not just eating something like the ridiculously big salad in one hour, but maybe even eating almost anything at all in one hour, because that in itself really hits that insulin resistance problem. Um, we, we are extra effective because we are hitting that problem and we're also like super low carb and calorie mindful. So we're hitting a lot of things at once with this kind of meal approach. I'm sure everyone that's watching this goes, don't you get hungry? That was my big concern as I started this and the like the voices in my head about, you know, can you really do this thing? Hunger was such a big problem for me in other diets. And I knew that was the single biggest thing that was going to cause problems for me. And when I consider doing the one meal a day, that is the key thing that really scared me. And I, but I wanted to try it. And I thought, well, my goodness, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to go big to try to um, counteract that hunger. And that's what gave me the idea for the lettuce and like packing my stomach full of something so high in fiber and like so bulky that maybe my hunger wouldn't be so bad. And indeed it helps with that. But the bigger thing is that I did not appreciate is that our hunger, those feelings of hunger, I mean, we're not really like starving. I mean, especially if you got all that body fat, it's, uh, it's hormonally driven and that hormone is trained. And so we are training ourselves. If we're eating a lot throughout the day, like, you know, all the little meals, we are training ourselves to eat many times a day. And so when we skip that meal the next day, we end up hungry in that time period. And so this is something that can be trained. You essentially, you're training yourself to eat at like 10 a.m. or 11 or whatever, mid-morning, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be like right on the clock, but that's when you eat, your body expects it. And um, increasingly over time, it just gets easier for me. I might get a little like peckish in the evening, but um, not hungry like I used to get and you know a little peckish at this point I start to associate it with my success I'm good with it yeah I hear that now you talk about goal setting in a different way as well talk about that yes absolutely this has been interesting to me because again I I mean I started out on something just kind of I had no mindfulness that I would do anything that actually would you know, achieve this kind of success. And so as I've looked back on like, how did I end up at my lowest weight as an adult? And I have people in the community with the same outcome. Well, they look at me and can say, wow, she did it so I can do it. So they have me as the example, but I didn't have an example. And so what was I doing that led to this point? And as I look at the way people are setting goals and I think about how I really set goals with diets in the past, versus this time, what was fundamentally different. And again, it was all up here. Uh, so many diet programs will recommend that you, well, you know, just just make a goal of set, losing 10 pounds and, um, you know, then 10 pounds at a time or just to fit into the next size of pants and that sort of thing. And the problem with those sorts of goals is they're basically really uninspired because in weight loss, you've got to compete with the donut. and. Y'all know what I mean, right? And I mean, you know what I mean, Jack? I mean, you get the donut, you want to eat it. You see it, you want to eat it. We all want to eat it. I mean, I would love to live in the universe where I could eat the mountain of donuts without consequence. And how do we compete with that drive to just reach and eat the donut? And um, the thing is, your pants won't zip. That's not that inspiring because you can get some other pants that do zip. I can tell you, <laughs> I've had a lot of pants. And so you need a goal that's so big that it really can compete with that momentary pleasure from the donut. And what I realized I did this time, my goal was different. My goal was to hike with my sons. I could look out of my windows in the Giant Sequoia National Monument and see the Giant Sequoia trees. I wanted so badly to hike. And so I got out, I lived in that goal. I was limping around, but I could drive. I could drive up into those conifers. I collected pine needles and put them in vinegar and you know, brought it home and had it in my salad, pine needle vinegar. I took kids on day trips. We camped, we lived in it. Um, when we weren't out in it, I brought it home like that pine needle vinegar. And so I was so deeply engaged with that goal. And as I lost the weight, I um, continued to measure my success based on like, can I hike better? And I just kept grinding off the pounds. I got down to my low point as an adult 
and thought, I mean, am I going to eat what I even, would it be possible to lose more weight? And I thought, you know, I would hike better if I lost a little more. So let's just see what happens. So I was out hiking and you know what happens when you hike? I mean, you lose some more weight. And so I ended up, yeah. So we've only got about two minutes left and I have two more questions I want to ask you. So I'm going to ask you to laser your answers as we say. Uh, You talk about the locus of control in weight loss has to be yourself. And I'm going to ask you, like, have we missed that message as a society and how does it apply to your, your program? So absolutely. Think about all the weight loss messages out there. So like, oh, buy this product and lose five pounds this month. Okay. Or let's see, rub this soap on your cellulite and you're going to lose a couple pounds a month or whatever. In cases like this, well, this is just actual, just soap, but in cases like that and those kinds of marketing claims, where's the locus of control of weight loss? It's right here. And that message, it's pervasive. And as soon as we pop out of our mamas, we're getting that message. We're getting it everywhere. And so no wonder we're confused. So what we draw a bright line in the community on any kind of um, product promotion, why would we want to give up the potential that we have for our own personal development um, and mess around with some of this stuff? Now, you have more than a program. You have a movement. And when you talk about your community, it's in the tens of thousands of people. Um, and would, would it be possible today to do what you're doing without the internet and social media? I, I think that's a great question. I mean, we're getting a lot of people in their own communities. That's where it's starting. People are seeing other people. They're seeing their neighbors. They're seeing people in churches and such. But it's really exploding because of the internet. And so we kind of have both. We have the traditional, but then that internet is setting it on fire and and, and really providing support for people who, who might otherwise be, you know, more isolated and limited. So it's giving some people more opportunities. And it's just giving more people more success cases is more people to follow, more people who look like them, who are just a month ahead of them or six months ahead of them on the path. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been to your website and it's a, I, I, I spent a lot of time there. It was very fascinating. All of the information, the before and after pictures, the different videos that people can watch, etc. So I want to encourage people to go there, especially if someone's dealing with weight. And you don't have to be 300 pounds to, to get value of this. I mean, you have people that have lost 40 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever. And, um, and, and so I'm really intrigued and inspired by what you're doing. So where can people find out more? What's your website? eatlikeabear.com. Very simple, eatlikeabear.com. Okay. Yes. Well, this has been inspiring and I love you. I love your energy. I love your message. I love what you're doing. And again, your book, The, the Ridiculously Big Salad, How I Ate Like a Bear and Lost 140 Pounds. And then your new book's coming out as well. So go to her website. And uh, this does not have to be a problem if you learn how she does it. It's, it works. It's worked for literally tens of thousands of people. Thank you again, Amanda. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. And for the rest of you, literally go to her website. I really want to encourage you to do that. And please tune in next week. We have another wonderful guest coming up. And until then, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you then. <laughs>